it's it's straight out of a horror movie next. I, I run downstairs and he's coming chasing after me. I, I remember grabbing the phone and dialing nine. I remember my hand being like this, I'm one. And then he rips the phone out of the wall. And I'm slowly walking backwards. He's slowly walking forward. He just doesn't say anything back to me. Look into his eyes. It was just pure evil. He was uh, completely determined uh, to kill that night. And he was on a killing spree at this point. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rewind that a little bit. I was born and raised in Austin, Texas with uh, the most incredible family. I'm the baby of four kids and all my siblings are, are rock stars. And um, we grew up going to church. Uh, we went to a church across town that was really old school and traditional. And I only went there to kind of make my mom happy as kind of a chore. I do remember at one point, um, my sister just sat me down on her lap and she just um, shared the gospel with me. And it just, I remember it clicking that, that God loved me so much and that there's, there's nothing I can do to earn God's love. It's, it's all about um, what he did for me, sending his son Jesus to die on the cross uh, for our sins. And I remember accepting the gospel at the very young age of seven. And then um, a big part of my story centers around a tragic event uh, when I was 12 years old. I was spending the night at my best friend, Mikey, his house. This is my cousin, Mikey. We, we had sleepovers all the time. I was 12, he was nine. His parents were in the process of getting a divorce. So my aunt, my mom's sister, had kicked my, my uncle John out of the house. I'm asleep and I'm, I'm hearing um, someone yelling from the other room. Finally, Mikey tugs on my leg and he, he's just saying, Joey, come help, come help, come help. And now I'm awake and, and I can clearly hear it now. I, I can hear my Aunt Phyllis screaming, Mikey, Joey, help, please, anyone, God, help. We go out of the bedroom and we're in the hallway and he slips away to, to look into the master bedroom. And then this is, this is the worst moment of my life. My uncle John comes out of the master bedroom with a, a butcher knife and, and blood all over him. And, and Phyllis is not screaming anymore at this point. She, she was murdered. And then, and then John looks at me and he, he looks at Mikey and he, he proceeds to tackle his nine-year-old son and, and stabs him in the chest several times and, and slits his throat several times just right there in front of me. Um, so I, I, I'm, I've watched my, my best friend, my cousin Mikey, get, get murdered by his father. I wanted to try to save Mikey, um, but I couldn't move in that moment. And John just slowly gets up off of, of Mikey and he slams me against the wall. And I'm just right here like this. And my uncle John tries to stab me in the chest. And he, he actually ends up stabbing me through my arm. And the, the tip of the blade just scratches my chest. And this moment is, is hard to explain, but I, I remember blinking my eyes and opening my eyes and I am like eight to ten feet removed from the situation and, and from my uncle and I look up and he's not here he's he's over here it's like God got him off of me just for a quick second and like pushed me out of the way or something and then I look at down at my arm and, and my muscle is literally falling out of my arm I can see the striations on my muscle and I remember putting it back into my arm and, and holding it 
I've run downstairs. I remember grabbing the phone. Nine, one. He rips the phone out of the wall. I'm slowly walking backwards, yelling at him, John, please stop. You don't have to do this. Please stop. He just doesn't say anything back to me. He just slowly is walking forward with this look in his eyes like demonic, like possessed or something. I, I start running around the bottom floor of the house and then I see which way he's coming. I just go the other way. There's blood everywhere. I'm, I'm bleeding profusely. And then I hear him go up the, up the stairs and I got out of the front door and, and ran to the neighbor's house and it's, it's like 3 a.m. and I, I just ring the doorbell like 40 times and the mom of that home steps out of the house and she screams, oh my God, the house is on fire. Uh, so he ended up uh, lighting the entire house on, on fire. And he accidentally lit himself on fire and half of his face is, is burnt. Like, and he looks like the monster that he is. And uh, he, he did survive that night. He's in Huntsville prison to this day. And, and, I, was, and I survived that night as well. This uh, feeling of survivor's guilt is intense and has has been with me for for a long time now. It's a it's a real crappy feeling to know you're the only one that got to to live on, and the others didn't. And I didn't feel like I was a, a good kid or a special kid, and I didn't do anything to deserve it. If anything, Mikey was a way better kid with than me. I feel like he had more potential than me. Um, It just never made sense. I remember being furious at God and I would, I would go out into my backyard and just like cuss God out. F you God, like what the, what the F were you thinking? And I was gonna, I don't know, rile him up or make him mad or upset back with me. Like why, how could you let evil win in such a big way? You got it wrong, you got it wrong. And I thought, you know what, if anyone has the right to, to act out, if anyone has the right to, to go crazy, it's, it's me. Got into just partying, alcohol, and, and smoking, and struggling with everything from depression to post-traumatic stress to survivor's guilt. My mom did have me go see like a, a therapist, a counselor. I hated going. I didn't really know how to open up, and I didn't really do a good job with that at all. Everyone thinks I'm this happy-go-lucky guy and they don't, no one really realize I'm dealing with all of these things because I could compartmentalize it really well. And then uh, I, go to, I go to college, I go to, to Texas A&M University. I remember just uh, one day, freshman year of, of college, um, I popped into a church service. Uh, sure enough, of course, it's Amazing Grace. Um, is, is playing at church and I just I just break down weeping. We're talking profuse crying for hours on end uh, because I just felt so broken. I never dealt with the grief as a kid and felt lost and like, what is the point of this life? That's where I feel like I need some legitimate Christian counseling and some Christian brothers community around me, and they really helped me see that God saved my life that night for a reason. It wasn't by accident. He didn't make a mistake, but he had a plan and a purpose for me, and he, he just, he wasn't done with me yet. I think survivor's guilt has held me back for years, and it's, it's through Jesus where, where all guilt and shame uh, can be taken away through the grace of God. I could just move forward and that could be um, a part of my past and that doesn't define who I am. Whenever I tell people this story, they almost always are like, man, I would, I would never guess that about you. That always leaves me feeling really encouraged um, that they're not experiencing me as just a depressed, down in the dumps kind of person who's 
been through a lot of trauma, but someone who, who has real joy. And that joy comes from knowing Jesus Christ and, and living for Him. My name is Joey Kelly, and I am second. <laughs>